Thanks for having me. I'm from the U.S., Washington, D.C. I'm pretty excited to talk to you about space. Just to get started, how many of you in the audience actually work within the space industry today? Good, good, great, okay. So those that are in the space industry probably know this, but um, just to get started, set the context. There's a lot of industry reports out there. Space is a big deal right now, right? It's a big, it's a big snazzy silver object. We're, some of the reports based on two, 2018 were saying that the market's about $360 billion large. I think that's pretty conservative. But just in the U.S. alone, our U.S. DOD spends about you know, $45 billion with NASA around $20, uh, NOAA around $2. Um, and, and you know, it's just growing and growing. What we're also seeing is between 2010 and 2015, there's a lot of investment in small space-related companies, both in satellites as well as the exploration space, which is interesting, but just in 2017, we've seen that amount just in about 112 firms. So, so the industry is growing. We're seeing a lot of investment, a lot of interest, and a lot of barriers are being removed, such as lower cost launch uh, and the like. And some, some industry experts are reporting that they believe that the industry could be around a, billion, a trillion dollars by 2040. Um, and as we all know, too, here in Australia, you guys have a new space agency, right? It's about 18 months in. We're seeing a lot of other countries doing the same thing. They're seeing this new space economy as an opportunity for economic development, new business development, new opportunity. Uh, just within Australia Space Agency, you all probably know this better than me, but just in the market itself, it's about a three to four billion dollar market with about 10,000 people. Uh, with the new space agency, one of the goals is to grow that to about 12 billion and 20,000 people by 2030. And it's not just transcending satellites as well as exploration, human space flight. A lot of what we're talking about in the U.S. It's all about how do we actually employ space assets? How do we use imagery? How do we use other types of um, technology development to actually benefit us here on Earth? Um, in multiple different market verticals. So the main point of my talk today actually is that AWS wants to help our customers out a lot more than we do today. We support a lot, of, we have a lot of partners. We have the Lockheeds, the Northrop's, we have defense departments all over the world that we do a lot of work for. And most of the time, we're supporting them around things like Earth intelligence, Earth observation, um, and various types of Intel related use cases. But last fall, you know, we started to answer the bill on a few other specific customer requests that I'll get to in a minute. And with that announcement, a bunch of us decided that, you know what, we need to focus on this industry. We, we, we don't necessarily just want to focus on how do we support some of our big partners and customers based on the issues or problems du jour, but how do we actually proactively think about making a mark in the space industry with our partners and customers? So as a result of that, we've created a new team um, it's a global team. It's a small team at the moment, but it's our space business development and partners organization. And we're looking at it in basically two major categories. Basically satellites, and then everything that's not satellites, aka exploration. And as you can tell, these are just kind of a, a non-exhaustive list uh, actually here, but, but you know, we're looking at everything from human space flight, deep space communications, as well as those satellite solutions where satellites aren't necessarily the means and the end in of itself, but actually a means to an end. And we'll get a little bit more into that. But when I mentioned before about in the fall, we had a really interesting announcement and it came from a customer ask, um, a couple customer asks, which was they're already using AWS for a lot of earth imagery analysis and basically different types of intelligence-based applications using satellite information and data. One of the customers asked us, you know, instead of me, having to contract with a different or partner with a different ground station provider where I'm probably just gonna pull the data into AWS and do what I want with it. How about you guys just put antennas on your data centers and you know, cut, out the, you know, cut out that extra step? So in November of last year at our reInvent conference in, in Las Vegas, we announced ground station as a service or AWS ground station. And the key part of this is that we're installing two parabolic antennas on each of our uh, availability zones, AKA data centers, and uh, 12 different regions, global regions all across the world by the end of 2019. The interesting thing about this that we like is it's very much our cloud economic model. So we pay only for what you use. We allow a user or customer to be able to schedule time with a satellite, download the data. It shows up in a customer virtual private cloud. 
where that customer then can develop whatever application they want from that information. So we're very excited about this, but yet it's still only the tip of the iceberg. The, one of the main reasons for our being as a Space BD and Partners team is that we want to work with our partners and customers and talk not just about how they use Ground Station, but how can Ground Station be one of the many LEGO pieces associated with all the other services, the 165 plus services that we have in Amazon and AWS that we can use to build different types of applications. We believe over time, some of those solutions can be uh, positioned in our marketplace for customers to develop new business models, make money differently, create new business cases for different types of solutions. So it's not just about ground station space. I mean, ground station is space, but space is more than just ground station. The other element that we, um, you know, we're a cloud provider, but a lot of what we do also is, what we try to do is a lot of ecosystem development. I have some colleagues actually here that I'd love for you guys to talk to if you're interested. We have a venture capital and startups team at AWS. We spend a lot of time with small companies. Um, one of the elements that we did last year around uh, the aerospace, new space arena was develop what's called a pop-up accelerator, which is not just helping a startup company get on AWS, but connecting them with our larger enterprise customers, our government customers, and our partner network so they have a high probability of growth and success over time. So one of the things that we are talking about right now, and we love input from all of you, frankly, from the different organizations you represent, is we'd like to have one of these pop-up accelerators within the next several months here in Australia. Um, and we love participation, we love some feedback, we love attendance. And at the end of these pop-up accelerators, the whole idea is to have a roadmap for those companies and potentially AWS partners and or customers to actually develop capability. It could be with ground station, doesn't have to be. It, what we want to have the focus and theme around is space, whether it's exploration or satellite solutions. So please talk to me or some of my colleagues if you're interested in providing some feedback or being a part of that. The other, the other aspect I wanted to cover um, is how do we actually operate within AWS to support this industry? We have a lot of different teams, a very large company. Um, and there's a lot of stuff on this chart, but the point of this chart is that we have a very coordinated and collaborative way of finding new companies, for, as one example, finding new startups, finding new companies, uh, new companies that are interested in getting into the space uh, exploration or satellite world, being able to nurture them, help them learn about AWS, help them get on AWS, help introduce them to partner networks, uh, providing them with a process and curated journey so they can be better partners on AWS, get access to contracts, get access to other types of ecosystem partners that then lead to larger enterprises where we have in our EPN, if you're familiar with our AWS partner network, we have various tiers where we support those partners in diff different types of um, ways, whether it be credit programs and pro for prototyping and developing for customers on AWS, or whether it's introducing them through pop-up accelerator programs and other business development types of activities. So that's all I had for this very short session. There's actually a panel uh, this afternoon at 2.40 where we're gonna go into a little bit more about what we're doing uh, with actually some of our customers and partners in space. Um, but I wanted to hopefully have enough time so if anyone had any questions, we can, you know, we can feel those. I have a couple other of my colleagues in here um, also that can help with some of the, answering some of those questions if you have any.